In this exercise, and from your startup screen, click on Open, browse to the Chapter 8 folder, and open Chapter 8 Analyzing Heating and Cooling Loads. The design process at this point has progressed past the initial conceptual stage, and we're now looking at doing some more complex heating and cooling load calculations. From the Analyze tab, click on Heating and Cooling Loads. In this view, we can see all the spaces that have been defined in our model. We can see the building type, its location, and the ground plane. In fact, these are the settings that we used when we were doing the energy analysis in a previous exercise. It's also worth pointing out here the overall building construction method is a new feature for Revit MEP 2013. At this stage of the project, the architectural link file may or may not contain analysis properties which are required to do heating and cooling load calcs. So the new functionality in Revit MEP 2013 is to allow the design engineer to override the properties with an analytical construction. What this means is that if I clear these overrides, Revit will look to the architectural link file for the analytical data. If it doesn't exist, it will then use these methods listed under analytical construction. Putting an override in place means that Revit MEP will use these analytical constructions regardless of the information that is in the architect's file. Here we can also define the building infiltration class and the report type and whether we're going to use load credits or not. Additionally, we can look at the details of the building model. In a previous exercise, we defined the zones of the building. If I select one of them, I can isolate it. So here we can see level one circulation or level one north external boundary and so on. The service type for this zone is currently set to building. We can change this to define our design in more detail. And as we progress our design, we can even select the rooms or spaces and define those space types to give us a higher degree of accuracy in our heating and cooling load calculations. We can also do this to the construction type of that particular space or zone, as well as setting occupancy data and electrical loads. But we don't stop there. We can also look at the individual analytical surfaces of these spaces. Clicking on analytical surfaces starts creating analytical volumes for all the different spaces in my model. This can take a few minutes. Once completed, we can see that in our list, we now have a cross that we can expand to see the different analytical surfaces for each space. So we can now highlight and isolate each analytical face in a particular space. And to identify several, we can use the control key to display them. Once we've checked everything and there are no errors, we can save these settings, come back and click on heating and cooling loads, and click on calculate. Again, this can take several minutes to perform. Once the calculation has run its course, we're provided with a report. This report can be found in your project browser. And scrolling down in the report in the drawing area 
shows us all the information regarding the heating and cooling load requirements for our building. We can click on these hyperlinks, which will take us to a particular space. This information is now also reported in our spaces. Scrolling back up the project browser, if we open up the HVAC analysis section and open up level one HVAC spaces, we can now select a space and look at the properties. The properties in here, they now reflect the calculations we've just performed.